Today I'm going to show you how to easily detect plane in AR Foundation using the AR Plane Manager. As you see, I can move around and the, oh hey, that's me, hit, and the planes are updating automatically. And I'm using AR Foundation Remote 2.0 to preview this in the Unity Editor, which I do have a video on. And thank you to Unity for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get started. So if you don't already have a project, I definitely recommend creating a new project with the AR template, which comes with some nice goodies. So if you scroll down, I already have it installed, but it should appear somewhere here and you can install that template and then create a new project using that. However, it is not a necessity. So I've opened this blank AR scene that I have, which I do have a video on setting up AR foundation, which has an AR session with an AR input manager an AR session origin, and as a child, an AR camera, which has a camera, tracked pose driver, AR camera manager, and AR camera background. And I'm just going to replace the tracked pose driver with the AR pose driver for AR foundation remote. Okay, so for the plane manager, we could just go into the AR session origin and add a plane manager component. So the way it works is that this creates a new game object for each plane it detects. So for that game object, we need to pass in a plane prefab. And then there's a detection mode. So if we want to only detect horizontal planes, then we can have that selected. Then just click nothing and click horizontal. Or if you only want vertical planes, you can select vertical. But if you want everything, make sure to select everything. And if you're not using a certain plane, like the vertical plane, make sure to disable it so you can save on some computational power. So now we need a plane prefab and luckily in the hierarchy, we can right click and go to XR and create an AR default plane, which this game object already has the components that we need for our plane, which includes an AR plane, an AR plane mesh visualizer, a mesh collider so that we can actually detect this plane and cast raycast against it, which is a, another video I'll be making, a mesh filter with no mesh, a mesh render, and a line render, which will be the line that appears around the boundary. So just to quickly explain these two components, the AR plane, if you want it to be destroyed when the plane is no longer detected, just click this check mark here, which is enabled by default. And then the vertex change threshold is how much a vertex position may change before calling the boundary changed event on this game object. That means the boundary will be recalculated and updated to account for the boundaries that have been changed, which if I right click and edit the script and I scroll down, you'll see there's actually an event you can subscribe to. So if you're interested, you can subscribe to the boundary changed event. So every time a boundary is changed, then you can get notified and it will return these AR plane boundary changed event args, which in the Unity documentation, you can see exactly what it has, which is the plane, the center, the normal, and a list of the boundary points. And then for the AR plane mesh visualizer, this is what actually lets you visualize the mesh in your scene. It generates the mesh for you. And there are a few settings here. So if you have a plane that is less than a certain threshold, then the components will be disabled for rendering the mesh and the line render. And you can select whether you want that to be limited or tracking. And you can see in the Unity documentation, limited is that some tracking information is available, but is limited or of poor quality. And tracking just means that the tracking is working normally. So essentially the tracking state has to be greater than or equal to the limited threshold so that the AR plane is enabled. Okay, and once we have this AR default plane, we can create a prefab out of it. So I'm just gonna create a new folder and name this prefabs. And then we can drag the AR default plane into the prefabs folder. We can delete that from the scene. Then we can go to the AR session origin and drag in that plane prefab. And once you build to your phone, or in my case, I'm gonna preview it directly in the editor with AR foundation remote. And you can see that the planes are starting to generate properly, which is pretty cool. And if you go into the scene view, now you can see the planes within the scene view, which is really handy for debugging. You can see that there's a trackables game object and each plane has its different game object. And you'll see that it's our plane prefab game object here. And so you can use this to easily debug what planes are being generated at runtime. 
two small things I want to mention is that for the AR Plane Manager, there's actually an event that you can subscribe to called Planes Changed. So every time a plane is added, updated, or removed, you can subscribe to this event, which you can just get a reference to your AR Plane Manager script and then do dot planes changed plus equals and the function that will be called in response to this event. You can also customize your plane as needed. In the case of the line render, you can adjust the settings such as the width. You can also adjust the settings of the material that's assigned. In this case, the mesh render has a debug plane material. So we click that it has this kind of yellowy color, which I'm not a fan of. So you can make your own material and assign it to that. And additionally, if you started with the AR template, as I recommended, under the assets, example assets, prefabs, they do come with an AR plane, which I actually like a lot better than the default one. And it comes with this AR feathered plane mesh visualizer, which adds a nice little fade out of the mesh so that it's just not a hard cutoff with a line. It's more gradual. And then you can add the width of that cutoff, which is called the feathering width. So to preview how that would look, I'll just drag in that AR plane here. And if I click play, you'll see just how much better it looks. So now you'll see there's these little dots, which is more gradual and it's less jarring than the yellow one. And this is with the AR template, which is really neat. And in the scene view, you can now see these little dots here. Not great for triphobia or whatever it's called, but I do like how it looks much better than the other one. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did find it useful, make sure to like and subscribe. And thank you again to Unity for sponsoring this video. And thank you to all my patrons for their support. It really helps me a lot. The link for it is in the description. If you are interested, I offer some neat perks. And be sure to join our Discord as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.